it won't be long until Fire Emblem is finally on the Switch. Or at least I hope so. Look, I don't mean to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but we've heard absolutely nothing about Three Houses since E3. If Yoshi's Crafted World is any indication, no news usually means delay. So that spring release date for Three Houses is looking less and less likely. I just want my silver haired axe waifu, okay? And on that depressing note, you might want to start looking for a placement Fire Emblem. Something to hold you over until it comes out. Luckily, there are quite a few titles to choose from on the Switch in the tactical RPG category. Disgaea 5, for example, could easily scratch that strategic itch coupled with cheesy Japanese silliness. And fan service. Granted, it's not the same vibe as Fire Emblem's medieval fantasy, but its silly take on the genre might appeal more to others. Even a grouch like Frederick can't help but chuckle at Disgaea's wackiness. All men in this universe belong to me! Now, kneel before me! <laughs> I don't know if I should laugh or barf. My lovely Seraphim, Better switch to Japanese. But if Saturday morning anime isn't your bowl of cereal, maybe a Saturday morning cartoon? Mario & Rabbids is one of the best 3D party titles on the Switch, hands down. Its endearing charm, unique aesthetics, and entertaining gameplay should keep most tactical RPG fans occupied for hours. Then again, Rabbids. Honestly, the Rabbids toned down their usually annoying existence to better intermingle with the Mario crew, and it worked well. That said, it won't sit right with everyone. Of course, there are even more tactical RPGs sprinkled on the eShop, a lot of which I haven't played. Mercenary Saga Chronicles, Disgaea 1, God's War, SteamWorld Heist, Banner Saga. But from the games I played, the closest you can get to replicating Fire Emblem on the Switch is Valkyria Chronicles 4. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Fire Emblem is the golden standard for strategic RPGs. There are some RPG lovers who can't stand the melodramatic storytelling and aggravating gameplay. However, you can't deny its influence in the genre, arguably sparking the genre's popularity in Japan. All if not most tactical RPGs can trace elements of gameplay to the Fire Emblem series. Yes, even Final Fantasy Tactics. How dare you! Valkyria Chronicles 4 is the same way. Playing through the game, you can't help but notice the similarities between the two series, as well as their differences. In some cases, Valkyria Chronicles excels beyond what Fire Emblem established. Actually, there's a lot Fire Emblem can learn from the Valkyria Chronicles series, both things to improve and elements it might want to avoid. Because of that, everybody who has picked up a Fire Emblem title and enjoyed it should at least try Valkyria Chronicles 4. In case you're unfamiliar with Valkyria Chronicles, imagine throwing Fire Emblem and Call of Duty into a blender and hitting frappe. Oh, that's not right. Uh, let's try this. Hmm, not quite. Ah, got it. There we go. It's more or less World War II, the anime. Personally, I think the manga's better, but yeah. Valkyrie Chronicles 4 utilizes turn-based combat like Fire Emblem, except instead of moving a set number of spaces, each unit can move freely on the map within a limit. However, units can move and attack more than once in the same turn, allowing you to snipe everybody in one turn. Okay, maybe that's a stretch. But having the chance to attack more than once brings some new strategies not seen in Fire Emblem. The map itself is not set in a grid system, rather a 3D environment with high vantage points and narrow pathways to use for cover. You're not fighting on a flat surface all the time. At times you'll be crawling through grass, climbing tall towers, hiding behind sandbags, and moving through snowstorms just to get the right shot. In that sense, Valkyria Chronicles 4's maps are dynamic and unique. Mission objectives also present a more unique challenge beyond killing all units. Granted, that is a common objective during side missions, but not seen as often in the main campaign. In one mission, you might need to sneak past the enemy to save an ally, and then the next take all the bases from the enemy. These new objectives force you to develop new strategies to beat the level. What worked in one mission probably won't work in the next. This turned battles into interactive puzzles rather than charging in guns blazing. Although that is a viable strategy. However, in true RPG fashion, sometimes the effectiveness of your strategy comes down to luck. You could have every step planned perfectly, only for you to miss. Luckily, there are plenty of opportunities to nail that headshot, but being overzealous on one kill could cost you valuable positioning. No matter what, misses will happen. The key is to stay calm, strategize, adapt, and execute. 
Nice shot, Kai. Okay, now Claude, get behind the enemy and fire! How could you miss? She was three feet in front of you! That's fine. That's fine. We'll just do it again. Do it again. Okay, just like last time. Go, Kai. That's fine. Try again. Try again. Shoot it again. We'll get this. Three hours later. Just shoot the bomb! You're dead to me. Another comparison to the Fire Emblem series are the units. The main cast consists of fabulously dressed all-stars fighting to save their home or find their true selves. The rest of Squad E, however, don't quite win the award for originality. Some might whine about Awakening and Fates relying heavily on weird quirks and tropes. It's got nothing on Valkyrie Chronicles 4. Almost every subunit possesses some oddity, whether penny pitcher or psychotic. Honestly, it's surprising that no two quirks overlap with the sheer amount of units you get. On top of that, every subunit shares the same model. Even the main cast shares facial expressions, movements, and hand gestures with the entire cast. While it's not a deal breaker, part of it comes off as lazy. Sega said, eh, slap a different face on it, they'll never notice. Well, I noticed. Everyone noticed. Despite Sega's lazy character models, I quite enjoyed playing with most of the units. Sometimes tropes appeal to an individual more than others, and I eventually found characters that worked for me. What? Choosing which units you use might come down to their preferences. Units have other characters they like to be around, increasing their stats when together in battle. Once you deploy a unit enough times, a side story unlocks, allowing you to strengthen the bond and the abilities of three units. These aptly named squad stories give background and personality to otherwise one-dimensional characters. Some of their most frustrating traits are expounded in these short stories and improve for the better. Also, a short mission accompanies every story, allowing you to actually use the units in battle. Even these bite-sized missions presented fun, challenging puzzles for me to enjoy whenever. While basic, the squad stories are entertaining and offer a nice break from the intense battles in the main campaign. Of course, like any JRPG, the plot is key in Valkyria Chronicles 4. Although, I'm not sure I've come across a story like this before. There are typical JRPG story elements of friendship and good versus evil, but the details and lore are a little more original. The Valkyria Chronicles series to date is basically World War II inspired battles and events set in an eerily similar alternate world. Even those who failed World War II History 101 can point out the obvious connections. It's almost unsettling how close to history some of the battles and story points are. But then a guy accidentally peeks up someone's skirt, lulling you right back into that anime coma. <laughs> no joke. Valkyria Chronicles 4 is probably the most accurate war game on the market right now. Guns, tanks, medics, actual death, sexual harassment, doesn't get more accurate than that. Overall, I thoroughly enjoy the plot and storytelling. Part of that has to do with the main cast. Claude, Riley, Raz, and Kai play off each other well, acting like longtime friends rather than characters who just happen to be in the same video game. They grow as human beings through the main campaign, and I quickly connected to them. I laughed, cried, gasped, and smiled all the way to the end with these four. Five if you count Minerva. So after explaining Valkyria Chronicles 4, the game might sound a little too different to compare with Fire Emblem. And that's true to an extent. Valkyria Chronicles and Fire Emblem are different takes on the genre. But that doesn't mean they can't learn from each other. Fire Emblem, for example, could borrow concepts from Valkyria Chronicles and expound on them. Give them a Fire Emblem twist. For starters, Fire Emblem missions could be varied like Valkyria Chronicles. Sure, killing all the zombies over and over again can be fun. No, I mean it. But mixing up mission objectives would add more surprise and on-your-toes thinking. Put a castle defend here, uh, find the secret base there. Not every level has to be different, but a little variety never hurt anyone. That takes us to the map. Fire Emblem is known for its checkerboard-like grid system, which does work well. But does that mean characters have to move one space at a time? In Valkyria Chronicles, you're free to move wherever within a limited amount of stamina. I'm not saying to get rid of the grid, but adding free movement could add an extra layer of strategy to Fire Emblem. Three Houses looks like it already has something similar with a different perspective mode, so at least they're modernizing it a bit more. And again, I don't want them to take away the grid system, because that is Fire Emblem gameplay. Just 
try to mix it up a bit. The same goes for terrain. To be fair, level design has been fantastic in Fire Emblem. There's a reason why people love Fire Emblem after all. However, they have become a little repetitive in recent titles. A way they can improve the level design is by creating more than flat terrains. They've done maps like that in the past, but lately the levels seem to be relegated to a flat surface. Add some hills, build some structures, and make it so each level stands out from the next. Three Houses, again, has glimpses of these changes. We can see some units fighting at higher vantage points, as well as ruins here and there. What role this plays beyond aesthetics, I don't know. But even if it's just atmospheric purposes, level design should be more than dull flat land. What's certainly not dull is Fire Emblem's character design. While some are hit or miss, I've never been overly disappointed with their designs. You can tell the artist takes their time designing each character, as opposed to Valkyrie Chronicle 4's copy-paste style. However, Fire Emblem characters in recent games tend to fall flat as interesting characters. They have great designs, but a lot of them feel one note. And as I progress through the story, I focus on characters I like to fight with and forget about the other ones. Perhaps that's the law of natural selection at work, but I slightly regret not getting to know the other characters more. One way to solve that is to integrate them through the story more. Some early Fire Emblem games do that fairly well, but Awakening and Fate struggle to move the limelight away from the main cast, besides Tharja. Granted, these entries focus less on overall story and more on the dating aspect, so it makes a little more sense. That said, Fire Emblem could take a page from Valkyria Chronicles and implement squad stories. In a way, Fire Emblem already does this with the support conversations, but they do get repetitive over time and even forced. Why not add a side mission or two to support the conversations? These missions don't have to be long, but could be a fun way to bond with characters beyond dialogue. Save a small village, find a secret treasure, fight over some cute NPC, race to the finish. There are loads of scenarios that Fire Emblem could use for side missions. It made up for Valkyrie Chronicles dull character designs, so adding them to Fire Emblem could make it better if done correctly. In the end, I don't want Fire Emblem to become Valkyria Chronicles with swords or Fire Emblem with guns, although I'm not opposed to a futuristic game. But I believe Fire Emblem can learn a thing or two from its fellow tactical RPGs, whether that be tweaking the gameplay, level design, or character progression. We can see that happening already in Three Houses, like enemy sightlines, so I'm optimistic we'll see more inspiration from Valkyria Chronicles. I'm sure Intelligent Systems is working their hardest to make Three Houses the next epic adventure in the series. With its return to home console, series-defining success is almost expected. Unfortunately, like every good thing in life, we must wait. In the meantime, I encourage Fire Emblem fans to pick up Valkyria Chronicles 4, or the remaster of the first game, and see for themselves how great of a game it is. There's really no excuse to not try it, since there's a demo of Valkyria Chronicles 4 on the eShop. Mech, I'll play Fire Emblem Heroes instead. You spend $200 for a lolly vampire. I may not technically be a child. Worth it. Thank you so much for watching. Have you tried Valkyria Chronicles 4? Do you love it or hate it? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see more Three Houses, check out my deep dive on the E3 trailer. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Goodbye, you good people!